Can Halo reclaim the throne as the number one shooter? What about its armor customization? Should it be rated T or M? And will the Brutes come back? Well, in this video, I'm gonna answer all of your burning questions. Stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again giving you a new video today. We're talking about some questions that you asked me over on my community page here on the channel. So if you guys want to be take part in the next episode of these Q&A kind of videos, please make sure to subscribe so you guys know when that community post goes live so you can reply to it. And let's get right into the content here. Shorthead asks, do you think Halo Infinite can bring back Halo to the top or do you think Halo will always remain a niche game like it is right now? Now I'm sure we all want to relive those community glory days of the Halo 3 era when basically Halo was the game to play. From Halo CE until 3, that was the best shooter to play at the time. Now obviously the shooter market has become a much more saturated situation because of the success of Halo and games like that and Call of Duty as well. Now do I think Halo Infinite has the ability to be the king of shooters? That kind of comes more to just more what's trendy and what people are kind of playing at the moment. The Halo franchise as a whole is actually rather old when it comes to gaming in general, most people have had a chance to play Halo and I think they've made up their mind whether or not they like that kind of game or not. Halo Infinite is going to have to offer a lot to a lot of different kinds of gamers out there that bring people away from Fortnite, from Call of Duty, from Counter-Strike and other kind of games to get them to play this one, which obviously Halo is kind of rebuilding itself at the moment going against those well-established franchises now that it's gonna be quite tricky. Do I think it will remain niche? I don't think so. I think Infinite will be a good boost to the community as well. Well, I think it reclaimed the throne as the uh, number one shooter to play. I mean, that's up to debate really what the game ends up kind of being. I don't think so, but I do believe what well, could definitely manage being a top 20, top 15, top 10 game you'd see on Twitch being streamed. Chip Douglas asks, Will and should Halo Infinite be rated M or T? That all kind of depends on what kind of tone that you want to achieve with the games. Halo as a whole has been a rather clean game. Uh, not too gory. I mean, we've seen gory games like Gears of War and stuff like that that kind of really, you know, push the levels of what people can accept as uh, uh, for a video game. Halo's actually rather been clean for the most part. Like, yeah, you'll see like blood splatter, maybe a little bit on the floor here and there, but nothing too gruesome that's kind of shocking to you. Uh, I've always kind of felt that uh, Halo being rated M is um, kind of a little overkill. I think back then it was rated M because Back in the early 2000s, games that were a shooter, if you're shooting things, that would make it an M game. Nowadays, it's not so much the case anymore, which I don't believe if Fortnite's ever been rated. If it is, most likely a T game. Uh, Destiny, kind of similar style where uh, it's not very gruesome or gory kind of game, and it's rated T, and I think they do a good job of conveying the story that they need to tell. Uh, it depends what kind of uh, game you're trying to tell with the M rated level. That would warrant uh, some more kind of gore, some uh, stronger language and things like that, which I feel like don't really fit within the Halo franchise. And so I think T, you probably would be able to get away just fine. I think if the ESRB went back and re-reviewed the previous Halo games, those would probably be rated T as well. Legendary asks, Will Halo Infinite come out for Xbox One and Xbox Series X or only Series X? Uh, it's been confirmed that it will release on the PC and the uh, new Xbox platform and also Xbox One. So three different major platforms the game will be releasing on. Uh, even possibly four, because there is a rumor that the uh, new Xbox Series X is actually gonna be two different consoles, a high end and a low end. So technically it would be like four if you think about it. And so, that kind of also bogs, brings up the question too, as well about crossplay and things like that, which I think crossplay will happen with Halo Infinite between console and PC platforms. Uh, Microsoft's initiative in the last like five years has been all about inclusive, bringing people in, platforms shouldn't matter. Uh, if you're playing on the Microsoft product, 
you know, you should be able to join in with everybody else. And I think that's what I was also kind of expecting as well, which also kind of, of course, brings up the question of aim assist, which I'd look to bring into another video coming pretty soon for you guys. Mata Logical asks, do you think all the old covenant enemies like brute, drones, skirmishers, and engineers will return in infinite? Well, according to the recent toy leaks, there was a brute in that, which he was kind of holding like a brute shot, shotgun looking kind of weapon. I can't show it on screen because uh, people have been getting copyright strikes on our channel for showing that kind of stuff and they're taking on their videos so i won't be able to show that guys but i'm pretty sure the brutes will be in the game as i believe uh, i haven't played it yet but halo wars 2 obviously you had uh the banished which looked like uh they can possibly still come back in halo infinite which is gonna be pretty crazy right there uh when it comes to maybe like engineers i believe they're actually like a forerunner uh, biological computer if I remember correctly if that's how the lore is which we definitely could see that since it looks like we're going to be back on a halo ring which is going to be fantastic for De uh, for Zeta Halo and uh, there's a lot of lore behind that place so I would definitely look forward to that with drones and skirmishers I mean possibly maybe we'll see like uh those are drones and skirmishers never really kind of came out to me as like gotta have factions or enemies to shoot against uh that drones do definitely bring in a unique aspect to him but um they never really found them that fun to really fight against josh carbon asks what armor do you want to see return in halo infinite i mean i any armor from Halo 3 I think absolutely has to come back into the game and there are, there are some pretty good looking Halo 5 armor sets as well. I definitely liked the Halo 5 Venator armor. I thought that looks pretty freaking cool. Uh, there's some other ones that I think are looking pretty good. Like I also like the uh, H2A armor sets as well. I think all those, even though it's like what three different ones, I think those all look pretty good as well. And uh, I know a lot of people love their uh, unicorn helmet so I think that armor set probably has to come back as well. And confirmed from Chris Lee that Halo Infinite will have Halo Reach level of customization. I would assume we'd probably see some Halo Reach armor coming in as well as their book Shadows of Reach takes place right before Halo Infinite. So I'm assuming you might see some good old Halo Reach armor coming back as well. As well as possibly some more redesigned versions of previous armor sets that maybe have not even looked the best, especially like Kelly's helmet. Looks kind of weird in Halo 5, but with the cover art that we see on the Shadows of Reach, her helmet looks pretty freaking sick now, so uh, there might be some hidden gems right there that looked pretty bad previously and then actually looked pretty awesome in Halo Infinite. Perception asks, do you think MCC PC would have been received more positively if they listed the game as Early Access? Personally, I don't think uh, Early Access title with these new MCC games would make a difference really, especially about the way Halo 2 was accepted as a release game. Uh, yeah, I think most of the games for the, mo for like the most part have been like 90% the good launches, except for Halo 2, but that was fixed quickly. Uh, I think Reach was a great launch. I think then uh, CE, I think the biggest issue that was only happening with the game was the bullet spread issue, and that was fixed now. And also with, obviously with Halo 2's launch was pretty bad. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of connotation behind early access. I think technically Fortnite is still in early access. I think that that, that term has been kind of used very loosely. It's just basically saying, hey, don't judge us harshly because uh, we're always changing the game, which uh, especially with these older titles, like a lot of the work's already been done. You know, we're just bringing it to PC. It's not necessarily early access. I think it's more uh, just an issue of just releasing properly. I believe even DayZ is still technically early access, even though the game's been out for like 10 years now or something like that at this point. Uh, so there's been a lot of negativity through that term as well. So I think even then you'd still get negativity to come to MCC on PC. Uh, again, also, since I think a big issue comes from actually just developers being so open and candid with the community that they let people know of all the errors and issues happening with the game and you read that you you read like 50 different errors are happening you're like oh my god this game's freaking broken but then you actually look into it you're like oh a decal might be low res or something like that instead which obviously isn't like a game breaking error but it may affect your experience with it a little bit and also bringing these console games to pc weird things are just going to happen uh i would rather get the chance to play the games than have it be absolutely 100 percent perfect joseph soda asks has 343 had a positive impact on Halo as a franchise? I think that's a multi-level question right there because there's certain aspects of the game I think 
343 is improved on, and then also other aspects I feel like they've kind of uh, declined on a bit. A lot of people like to blame 343 as putting like the nail in the coffin when it comes to killing the Halo franchise, but honestly I think Halo was already kind of on that trajectory when 343 was going to release Halo 4, as Halo Reach wasn't really the most well received game. It took a lot of uh, iterations of like the competitive settings just to get that down just to a playable level. Uh, a lot of people didn't like the new stuff that was brought in the Reach from Bungie. And then with the popularity of Call of Duty coming out that 343 decided to jump on that and kind of embellished all kind of the stuff that people didn't really like about reach and just kind of went full on with that and so i applaud 343 for you know being so ambitious with the halo tiles rather than just copy and pasting with a new map pack like call of duty has been doing for so long but i do feel that 343 has kind of been following trends a little too much and i really hope that 343 at this point now can recognize the unique aspects that makes halo so great that they can make this infinite release exactly what people want out of their Halo game. I also would say community-wise, 343 is probably one of the best out there in gaming. Uh, no other developer that I've seen, at least, has this level of candid conversations that they have with their community. Uh, like I, I watch a lot of Call of Duty video, update, video updates and stuff like that, because uh, I like to play occasionally with friends, and there's every single update, every single one, there are hidden fixes with the game fit in patches and nerfs that just do not get mentioned whatsoever and then people will find that out because they have to test it and look up reddit and stuff like that and 343 it's like hey here are all the bugs that are in our game right now you know everything we're open we reply to you on twitter we're open and honest with you guys ever since sketch took over as the community manager position 343 honestly i would say has probably the best communication with their uh, community of any other game franchise that i've seen at least so I feel like there's a yes and no answer to this question. Aiden Binney asks, Do you mind telling me what you're doing on this ship? Sir, finishing this video.